the good old west side of Los Angeles. Probably one of the more popular areas and destinations that tourists will flock to from all over the country. Some of the nicest and most prestigious beaches are found on the west side, such as Santa Monica and Malibu. You have several beautiful piers where you can venture out onto the water. And in general, it's just a phenomenal place to live. The weather is perfect, the people are great. As a West Side local myself, I just wanted to go over all the individual neighborhoods and show you a little map tour of us exploring the West Side together. By the way, if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Darren Kriz. I have a real estate sales and marketing team out here. We help clients buy, sell, and invest in property every day out here in the greatest city in the world, Los Angeles. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out, shoot us an email or text down in the description below. But let's get into the map tour of the West Side. Many people have different opinions on what the West Side specifically is. Some people say everything west of Hollywood. Some people say west of the 405. Some people say everything south of the Santa Monica Mountains and the hills, but in this video, I'm gonna be specifically just touching on west of the 405. So let's check out the map. Good old Los Angeles. So here's downtown, you've got West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, and here is the 405. So as I said, everything west of this 405 freeway, we are going to show you guys. And we're starting right here up in Brentwood, one of my favorite, I'm gonna probably say that about every single neighborhood and city we go through. So uh, try to catch me here. But Brentwood, one of the better, nicer, cleaner, more uh, upscale places to live here on the west side. This is the central part of Brentwood, right along San Vicente Boulevard. And I will be dropping this guy throughout the video just to give you a little rundown of what the streets look like. So it's more than a map tour. It is a street view tour, basically a driving tour. You've got your local Whole Foods, in Brentwood here on San Vicente. We're gonna drive down this way. You see all of the shops and beautiful cars, of course. You've got some commercial buildings and this is a majority of Brentwood. Let me go, let me uh, zoom out here. And this is gonna be a longer video. We're gonna to touch on everything here on the west side. All, there's a lot of high-end restaurants on Brentwood as well, on San Vicente here. John and Vinny's, you have Katsuya. You have some great cafes, Coral Tree, right across the street from Cafe Lux, and then AOC Brentwood, good restaurant, Sugarfish, of course, a classic, Toscana right there. I'm just gonna keep naming all the restaurants. You go up Barrington in Brentwood, we'll take you to Sunset Barrington Plaza. There's more little shops. This is a cool area to just show you briefly. You look around at this little roundabout where you got more several little shops. It's going to be hard to talk about every single individual area, but I definitely want to go over as much as I can. So in Brentwood, you go north. These are where all the houses are, and this takes you up into the hills. Some expensive homes ranging over $50 million even are up here in the Crestwood Hills. And you have the Getty, the world famous Getty. If you guys don't know what it looks like, here it is. I'm sure you've, you've seen photos of it. The Getty probably has some of the best views. It's the best lot in almost all of Los Angeles. I'm not even just saying that. It is wild how insane those views are. You see the ocean, you see downtown, you see everything. So Brentwood's pretty high end. You keep going here. Brentwood even has its own country club right on San Vicente, close to the heart of the area. And then Brentwood Country Mart, just a little, let me show you if I could show you this red barn here. I have a video, a driving tour of the entire Brentwood area as well if you want to check out that video. So here it is, the Brentwood Country Mart. There's the red barn, a lot of nice little shops in there, and just more along this street on 26th. Let's get out of there, keep showing you. So now as we keep on moving along San Vicente, we're just gonna hop around here. Brentwood Park, Fresh Prince of Bel Air Mansion. Did you guys know that's actually in Brentwood? It's not in Bel Air. Well, now you know, it is in Brentwood in an upscale neighborhood. So we keep going west, Riviera Country Club. That is where they host the Genesis Invitational Tournament every year. PGA event, Tiger Woods hosts every year. And it's right across the street from the Brentwood Country Club. So you have two very high-end, well-known country clubs next to each other. And now we're in the Pacific Palisades. So we just finished a majority of Brentwood. So what I can say about Brentwood is there are a lot of young people that move to Brentwood in general because let's say it's close to UCLA, Westwood's right next to it. It's close to the 405. You can get around town very easily by hopping on the freeway. It's close to the VA Medical Center, so there's a lot of workers there. And then it's still close to Santa Monica, where if you are young and you want to 
experience the beach, go out, have a good nightlife, you are still 10, 15 minutes away if you're living in Brentwood. So this whole area in general is apartment buildings. A lot of young people will live there, condo buildings that you can buy for under a million dollars too. So it's somewhat affordable in this area with all of the condos and by somewhat affordable, under a million, you're getting like a one bedroom, small, tiny condo. So don't think that you're getting any kind of home for a million there. But then Wilshire, this also is part of Brentwood and they do have a high rise building, the landmark right next to um, the University High School. Let's see if I can show you that, boom. This is, there's a nice apartment building. There's a landmark, some commercial buildings. This is also considered Brentwood here, but let me get out of here. All right, now we are going to the Pacific Palisades, Riviera Country Club, everything up here in the Riviera area, super expensive, high-end homes. You'll see some over 30, 40 million, 50 million, they're crazy. And then as you keep going, there's some nice hiking trails, also in Brentwood and Palisades, Mandeville Canyon, then Will Rogers Historic State Park has a great hiking trail. You have Rivas Canyon, you have the viewpoint at the Temescal Ridge, Temescal Canyon Falls, lots of nice hiking here it goes on in the Palisades. And then you have the Alphabet Streets here in the Palisades, which is right next to downtown Palisades. One thing I love about the Palisades is that it, you can't get to it just from a major street in LA. You have to go up into the hills and it's very hidden from the rest of the city. You're not going to ever pass by the Palisades to get anywhere. So that's why it's just so clean, it's so upscale. A lot of great families live in the Palisades, but they, they aren't uh, definitely, they're definitely wealthy families. It's probably one of the more expensive areas to live in in LA, not probably, it definitely is. It competes with Beverly Hills when you're here in the Palisades. So this is what it looks like if you're driving down and just trying to find a restaurant to go to. This is the Palisades, look at, look at the architecture of the retail shops. Now that does not look like Fairfax to me, guys. We are in the Palisades. We turn right here, and I have done a full driving tour of Palisades. I've done a neighborhood video on the Palisades describing every neighborhood. This is the Bay Theater, and then lots of nice shops as you turn right. You can see this area is great in the Palisades. And then as you keep going, more Palisades. The Getty Villa is there, which is another museum similar to the Getty Center. Look at that drone shot or render. I don't even know if that's real, but that is an incredible shot right there. You see the ocean and everything. The Getty, Getty Villa, and it's free. Just have to pay for parking. Great place to go. And as you keep going on PCH, then you eventually get to Malibu, which I know you guys know about Malibu. Won't talk about it too much, but Malibu, best beaches in the world. Some of the best, most expensive homes in the world. Actually, the most expensive home ever sold was in Malibu, 250 million to Jay-Z and Beyonce. So we won't go over too much of Malibu, but then you have all the individual neighborhoods in the Palisades. And generally, you have just this little downtown area in the Palisades. Not too many uh, young, single people will live in the Palisades. They don't really have a nightlife. If you're gonna be in the Palisades, you will be going to Santa Monica if you want to experience more of a, of a social scene and a late night crowd. But I think I said Palisades a thousand times in the last two minutes. But then you have the point at the bluffs. These all have great sunset views. You can see all the way to the Santa Monica Pier. So now let's go a little more south, past Rustic Canyon, which is just tree-lined, shady streets in the Palisades. You have north of Montana. Such a, an amazing area north of Montana is because of the shops along Montana. So as you drive around these streets, which I'm gonna give you, I mean, this video is gonna be pretty long anyway, so we might as well just do it. Drop myself off in an alley here, shouldn't have done that. We're going to just go on like 14th right here and just go down the street. So you can see what it's like to be a local driving down 14th in north of Montana. So we are technically north of Montana on this tour now. And we're just gonna drive all the way down to Montana specifically. Look at the homes, look at the streets, tree lined. It's a beautiful area. All right, we're just gonna drop ourselves off here right next to the La La Land Kind Cafe. If you guys have ever been there, some of the best coffee in all of LA if you are a lattes person. So as we keep going, here's what it looks like. You have the local Whole Foods, smallest Whole Foods in LA, but it still has everything you need in a Whole Foods. And on the other side, there's your La La Land Cafe. Lots of restaurants and on, on the weekend nights, it gets pretty crowded on this street, tough to find parking, a lot of great 
restaurants such as you have R&D Kitchen, which is always very popular. And then let's see what else you have here. Yeah, you have Rusty uh, Tuscan Kitchen, a couple Italian restaurants along Montana. And the Arrow Theater, I saw a giant line outside of this theater. They have performances almost every night. And Montana just stretches the whole, it's basically this whole length from uh, 8th Street or Lincoln Boulevard all the way up to 17th where you see all the retail shops in the Montana area. Once again, this is not a cheap area to live. Everything north are the homes in the north of Montana probably. I mean, you're getting $10 million houses. Even, even more than $10 million houses in some areas, new construction. And it's right next to Brentwood. If you go a little more south, we have more condos, more apartments that you can find decently affordable in these areas, in the Wilshire, Montana area. You keep going north, northeast, Brentwood, you're, this is getting more expensive. And then we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna cover this whole map now. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna go in all directions. As we go to Centinella, we're entering into the West LA area. So West Los Angeles, VA Medical Center is right next to the 405. Then you have Ohio Avenue, which takes you down to, it, basically Ohio Avenue is definitely a, a big commuter street right next to Santa Monica Boulevard, which is right here. Let me drop us off on Santa Monica Boulevard. In West LA, new apartment buildings being built here on Santa Monica Boulevard. This specific one is just about complete in real time, more apartment buildings. And then let me just show you all the little, little shops right here. On the right side, Good People, Cafe 50s, bunch of sushi spots. I did just do a video showing you guys all of this right here, but this is a great area to live. Very central as well, and a lot of young people in West LA in this general area because of the same factors that you would find living in Brentwood. Proximity to everything in LA is close because you're right off the 405, which takes you to the 10 easily, takes you to Santa Monica easily, and then you can ride Santa Monica Boulevard all the way down to the beach if you ever need. So now we're going to Sawtell, Japantown. Some people think Sawtell is their favorite place in all of Los Angeles. I wouldn't say it is my favorite, but I wouldn't say that it's my least favorite either. So let me show you Sawtell here and drop a little guy off in Sawtelle. I just did a video, a full video explaining Sawtelle. All right, the mic died and it's a new day. So we're gonna go back to where we left off and that was over in Sawtelle. Here we are in Japantown. I'm gonna drop this guy off and show you. So Sawtelle is, they have this area called Japantown where there's multiple sushi restaurants. There's multiple uh, ramen restaurants. If that's what you're into, you can see you've got all of your classics right here, Sushi Stop, great place. Sonorita's my favorite burrito in LA is right here on Sawtell, in the heart of Sawtell. There's also a lot of newer apartment buildings that you might see as you're driving down Sawtell Boulevard here. But let's zoom out and keep on going on with the tour. So all of this right here, pretty much apartment buildings, condos, you can purchase one to two million dollars. You can get a condo here in West LA, Sawtell, and I do like Sawtelle because of the central location, it's convenient to get right onto the 10, right onto the 405 as other areas such as Brentwood, West LA, Sawtelle, and then around the Santa Monica Airport. But if you drive down Olympic here, this is mainly commercial buildings that you'll see to both sides, a few hotels as you take Olympic all the way down to Santa Monica. And now we're gonna touch on Santa Monica. So, uh, okay, so Olympic also does bring you to, it merges with the 10 basically, if you wanna to get to Santa Monica easily. And now let's talk about Santa Monica. Here we are. Definitely one of the most touristy cities in all of Los Angeles. Everything here in yellow are retail shops. You have Third Street Promenade. I wonder if we can even drop our guy there on Third Street Promenade just to show you, whoa, we are in a store. All right, walking down, this is the walkable street. You can't drive a car, that's why I didn't know if you could drop our little guy here, but this is what it looks like. It's beautiful during Christmas time. These light up during the holiday season, and there's a lot of any shops, your classic franchisee restaurants as well, and just a beautiful sight to see. Tons and tons of people every day, all tourists along Third Street Promenade there in the heart of Santa Monica. Then you have the Westfield Outdoor Mall right here. You've got everything from your Nordstrom's, your, your Rolexes, and then you've got a nice rooftop restaurant called Lulu's, which I actually went to last week. True Food Kitchen, pretty decent. 
healthy food. That's a quick meal right there. And there's a, that's a, your classic outdoor mall, indoor outdoor mall in Santa Monica. And it's right next to the Santa Monica Pier. How crazy is that? Talk about being a tourist. You walk down Third Street Promenade, you go to the mall, and then you walk down the pier. That is just the ideal day if you're a tourist in Santa Monica. Restaurants, you got Elefante rooftop restaurant, amazing sunset views. Ocean Ave has obviously the best views along the ocean that you will see in anywhere in the on the west side or even in Southern California, honestly. Lots of hotels as you keep going north back to the Wilshire, Montana area. You've got the Fair, 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 Fair okay, the tongue twister right here, the Fairmont Miramar Hotel where the bungalow is, one of the more popular bars in Los Angeles, all of Los Angeles. They have um, great daytime bar activities and then nightlife is pretty good there at the bungalow as well. Hundley Hotel right next door and then more luxury hotels in Santa Monica a little north. If we go south, this is where the locals mainly will be around in Santa Monica and Venice Ocean Park, one of my favorite areas on all the west side. I spend a ton of time in Ocean Park. There are a lot of bars here on Main Street. Nightlife is ideal for the younger demographic from maybe 21 all the way to 35 on Main Street. There's several different bars and restaurants that you can hop around on any weekend night. And you're only one block away from the ocean, from the beach. So that is just a convenient thing to do it on. You also during the day as well, if you're down to drink during the day or just hang out, if that's not what you're into, you can still go to the beach very conveniently. Shutters on the beach, great hotels. There's more hotels all around the north portion of Ocean Park. And then if you go a little more inland, these are all, majority of them are townhouses, condos, triplexes, uh, little smaller homes. Let me just show you what it looks like briefly on a random street. I mean, these are still not going to be, even though they're not the newest or the prettiest homes, look at this thing. Like it's still gonna be $5,000 for a one bedroom uh, apartment around this area. Just because of how close you are to the beach, how many people want to live here. It's just the demand of Ocean Park in general. Cafes, Earth Cafe, your classics. I'm sure you guys all know about that. And as we keep going down, then you have Venice. Venice is, I, I don't, I think it's underrated, honestly. Venice, obviously everyone knows what Venice is, but I think Venice has got to be one of the more underrated cities in all of Los Angeles because just go to Venice yourself and you tell me what you think about it. It's not what you might see on the news when they trash Venice. If you've never been down Abbott Kinney and experienced all of these coffee shops, restaurants, bars, and just the sight of going down this palm tree lined street here is unlike any other street in all of Los Angeles or all the west side. Check it out, we're doing it now. You're getting a sneak peek down Abbott Kinney. I have done driving tours um, down this street on about a year or two ago on this channel if you wanna see what it actually is like if you're driving down, but you're getting the full experience with me right now anyway, so we're, we're really doing this thing. And aside from Abbott Kinney in Venice, you go down Venice, this whole area, a lot of homes, the homes in Venice, these are gonna be two plus million dollars even if it's a small two bedroom. I've seen some really nice $2.5 million two bedrooms, maybe less than 2,000 square feet. This is where the Venice sign is right here on Windward. Lots of nice bars and restaurants, Bell's Beach House, highly recommend, Great White, some of the best breakfast burritos there. Uh, hotels along the, this area too. And that leads you right to your famous boardwalk, Muscle Beach, the skate park, all of those good things to do in Venice, which I'd recommend against just going to the boardwalk in Venice. I would tell you, if you're gonna go to Venice, don't go to the boardwalk, go to the Venice Pier, go to Windward. You don't have to go to the boardwalk though. And go to Ocean Park or go to the canals. Nobody knows about the canals in Venice. Let me drop this guy off just to, show you what the canals are. I mean, are we in Venice, California or Venice, Italy? All of these homes have their own docks, they have their own boats. Did you even know that this existed in LA or in Venice? Nobody really gets that. This is unbelievable. Every time I go, which is multiple times a week, I'm always in shock of how beautiful this looks, how this is even a real area in Los Angeles or in Venice, and I go pretty often. So then you've got Right here is the border from Venice that separates Venice from Marina del Rey. And what Marina del Rey is, which is kind of interesting because Marina del Rey basically owns the Venice, Venice Pier right here, which is longer than the Santa Monica Pier. 
more bars and restaurants along Washington Boulevard, more smaller bars and restaurants. You've got your divey bars like your Hananos right here, your Venice Whalers with a rooftop, great sunset views. You have some good restaurants along this uh, stretch of Washington as well, Baja Cantina. And then as you see, the Venice canals do lead all the way out to this little peninsula. I love these homes along this peninsula right here in Marina del Rey. They're super private. There are no restaurants on this side. And then you've got the hotels surrounding the marina, which houses the largest um, area of boats in the entire country. I think it's 1400, something around there. And there's a ton of high rise hotels and apartment buildings in this Marina del Rey area. Luxury apartment buildings, luxury hotels. Marina del Rey is one of the best cities in on the west side. I feel like I've said that about every city on the west side, but Marina del Rey, the con about Marina, let me tell you some cons since I've told you about pros. Marina del Rey is just a bit far from everything else. Because this 90 is not a freeway, it's gonna take you 45 minutes just to get to Beverly Hills. You've gotta drive usually down Venice Boulevard, get to the 405, then get to the 10, or just go all the way to Santa Monica Boulevard, and then Beverly Hills is hard to get to as it is. So if you're gonna be living in Marina del Rey or even Venice, you're gonna be spending most of your time there on the west side, which isn't a bad thing all the time. Just south, we've got Playa del Rey, which Playa del Rey is such a unique area to live. The houses are so different I, oh my god, that's one of the nicest houses in all of Playa del Rey. When I think of Playa del Rey, I do not think of houses that look like this. I think of more houses that look like th this one right next door to it. But they are all very unique, and you can see the windy roads, the hilly roads, the palm trees, of course. We are in Los Angeles. That is That was a good gist of what you're getting there in Playa del Rey. It's just its own small community. You will feel like a small town um, individual if you're living here. Playa Provisions is your classic coffee shop and nightlife play area to go out in Playa del Rey. A lot of young people and older, big mix, big demographic mix there in Playa del Rey because you have it all and you're close to LAX, the Los Angeles International Airport. Just next to Playa del Rey, Westchester. Now this is where you're going to find mostly families and it does surround Loyola Marymount University, a very well-known university here in Westchester on the west side. And these homes can range up to three plus million dollars. Large homes, five bedroom houses. Let me show you what these neighborhoods look like. See, you're getting decent sized lots, cozy neighborhoods, very safe, some affordable, but this is your suburbs of the west side, Westchester, an underrated community, in my opinion. I'm seeing homes all the time. Look at these. These are We even have modern homes here in Westchester ranging from mid $3 million. This is probably a 2017 build or so. And that is Westchester for you. They have a lot of great schools, churches, as you can see, all throughout these streets. And it is also right next to LAX. So if you are someone that likes to travel a lot, it's only five minutes to get in and out of LAX. Well, that's uh, once you just getting there. Forget the rest of the activities you have to do getting through TSA. And then we got Playa Vista, which is mainly apartment buildings right next to, pretty close to Loyola Mar Marymount. And there is, okay, let me show you. You will not feel like you are in Los Angeles when you're in Playa Vista because it's, it gives you more of an Orange County vibe, an Irvine vibe, because there's a lot of apartments that look like these that I'm circling here. Or, and then there's also a lot of great restaurants. Everything looks fairly new, as if they were done in the last 10 years. This entire Playa Vista area, great for working professionals. And Playa Vista does also have all of your, this is the Silicon Beach area, where all of the big tech company headquarters are located. You've got YouTube, you've got Amazon, Google, all of that here in the Silicon Beach. That's what they call it. Um, Playa Vista, just south of, just east of Marina del Rey, south of Del Rey. So this whole area right here from Mar Vista, Westdale, these are all suburbs as well. So not probably, I would say probably the lower end of the west side is this specific area, Culver West, Culver Garden, Del Rey, leaking into Culver City, probably on the lower end, but still a lot of great, which, is, which means more affordable. Being close to the west side, but more affordable areas to live. You don't have the nice luxury apartment buildings, maybe a couple but it's gonna be cheaper to buy a home, cheaper to rent, buy a condo as well, 
and not your typical air wands are going to be found here in the Culver Garden, Culver West area. But then Mar Vista is very nice and unique. I have a full driving tour on Mar Vista. If you want to learn more, watch that driving tour. Just north of Mar Vista, this is where, this is the main area of Mar Vista where you see Mar Vista Houses is a neighborhood on the map. If you click on it, we'll, uh, we'll show you just a brief neighborhood look. I'll drop on a random street. And here's what some of the homes look like. That is a unique home. You've got modern homes. You've got nice Porsches in the driveways. Check that out. This is one of your safer and nicer neighborhoods and communities on the west side. I know a lot of people, it's mainly older families, not older families, um, people that want to settle down on the west side will probably move their family to Mar Vista. They've got great little leagues. You also can golf at Penmar Golf Course, which I've been very recently. Penmar Golf Course also does have the Penmar, they have a uh, weekly live music. They have multiple times a week, I think they do live music there. And it's a nine hole golf course, the only golf course on the west side. And it's not a full 18. And that's aside from Rancho Park, which is in Century City. It's impossible to get a tee time though. So if you want to actually golf, you can play at Penmar and it's still a good course. Yeah, I, I definitely think anyone would like that course in general, even though it's a small nine hole, not too many long holes there, but what else? Mar Vista Rec Center, I said you have your Little Leagues, you have uh, the Santa Monica Airport right there. That was basically everything. I just wanted to touch on every single individual neighborhood on the west side. Hopefully I was able to get the audio working this time because we made this video into two parts. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know what your favorite neighborhood on the west side is. I would love to know what your guys' thoughts and opinions are on the west side and Los Angeles in general. As I said, my name is Darren Kriz. I have a real estate sales and marketing team in Los Angeles, the greater LA area. We specialize in new construction, in hidden gems, in remodels. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. Also hit the like button and subscribe for more videos just like this coming in the future. Appreciate you guys as always, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.